So pay-per-view numbers came back for Francis versus Fury, and there was a headline that they bombed. That is not true. That is so inaccurate. And I, I don't know why. I don't know why I have to do everything in this space. I mean, honest to God, I, I don't know why I have to work alone. I will share with you, regardless of the arrogance, I'm very well that this is going to be gross, that I will be shining my own wheels. There is nothing within this sport that I have touched that is the same after I was done with it. Nothing. There is nothing. And I could elaborate and go into detail, which will really gross you, but there is nothing that once I got involved in, it didn't matter if it was the training side, if it was the weight cutting side, if it, it was the nutrition side, it didn't matter if it was the fan and the PR and the meet and greets, it didn't matter if it was the press conferences, the scales, the fight itself, the ultimate fighter, it does not matter. There is nothing in this sport that I have touched that when I left was the same as before I got there. There's nothing that wasn't observed, how I did it, that then got emulated and sticks around. And I know so many people will attempt to do things like that and just be wrong. And it's weird anyway. You think, well, isn't this a team player? I, I understand those things, but there are some very unique traits. And there is nothing that once I came and when I was done, it stayed the same. Nothing at all followed the direction that I led it to. And I share that with you because it will drive me crazy when somebody asks me my opinion. You must understand, if you're asking me my opinion on something or how it should be done or what the right answer is, once I give you that, you're now done. It does not require further review. You have review with other people, and then you ask Chael, and I settle it. And whoever was closest to saying what Chael said is the one that wins the prize. That's how this works. I'll give you a great example. You will have a number of people that will sit around, they'll argue about a rule. They'll argue about a criteria. They'll argue about something administratively. And if it was done right, not only by the book, but did they have the right interpretation of the intent of the author of the book? It's very important, and you'll have them. But once everybody's put their idea out, they will then and only then call John McCarthy. Now, John McCarthy doesn't weigh in with them with the I thinks. My guess is John will answer the question. The end. The end. Not John submits his idea to group think and we still keep going around and we don't get anywhere. Once you ask John, you now have your answer. And I, I share this with you because I have to read that the pay-per-view bombed. Now, I was the one who first came to you and told you the pay-per-view was not profitable. Not profitable and bombing are not the same thing because they all come down to what was the expectation. It's not your call if it bombed. You do not get to say Jake Paul versus Diaz did more. And therefore, this was a fail. You don't get to do that because you didn't write the check. That's where it's important. There is a report that came out. I came to you and told you guys this was a financial disaster, but I also shared with you why. And that is the most important thing, right? The MMA fans did not come along in droves, but they also weren't treated to what they're used to. And I'm the one that shared this with you. The MMA fans are treated to a full card, which is five fights, five feature promoted, meaningful contests. And they're treated to that at a reasonable time in the evening. And they're treated to that for around $50. This had one match. 
not two, three, four, five. You're getting one match that was predicted to be three minutes long. Anybody would have predicted for you that the walkouts with the anthems and the, oh God, it was painful to watch all of this when you're excited to see it. But everybody would have predicted that the walkouts and announcement would have been longer and more drawn out than the fight itself. And that's a difficult thing to buy. It's difficult to ever see a movie or read a book if you believe that you already know the ending. It's tough. It's a tough thing to do. In addition, it was a higher price than MMA was used to. And moreover, it was on at 11 in the morning, Pacific time. It was on at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. So these are all reasons when I came to you first and let you know that the pay-per-view was down. But when it got finally reported, it wasn't stating that the pay-per-view was 75000 It first reported that it bombed, and then it stated it's 75000 Now, as the first one that brought this to you, and as the only one in the room that actually knows, I will just share with you, 75000 is not only generous, it is tremendously generous. It did not do 75000 It did far less than 75000 That is not an accurate number. And I'm going to have to leave it at that. But my umbrage isn't only what they had the numbers wrong. They don't have an ability to have them right. Like their algorithm, what they do, it's... It's as close as you're going to be able to find publicly. The problem is that they call it a bomb. And a bomb only has to do with projection and expectation of the person writing the check and absolutely nobody else. Absolutely nobody else gets to say, and 75000 in the world of pay-per-view is not only a reasonable number. It's not only a reasonable number for what this was. In the world of pay-per-view, that's a very solid number. Very solid. There are things on pay-per-view that do less than 10,000. There's been events on pay-per-view that did 1,500. Lost their mortgage, lost everything. I mean, there's been some really bad ideas, and pay-per-view is a long-term play. And that's the one thing that no company understands. That right there. Without me even being the smartest guy in the room, I'll just give you that one. The one thing that nobody understands, you will have people that go in, and I know the pay-per-view, and I've done pay-per-view, and I got the contacts, and I can make this happen, and somebody else gets thrilled and excited because they think that they have something great. Now, the person they've hired as their consultant didn't keep this from them. They didn't keep it from them so they could collect their check for the next three or four months until the event goes off and bombs. They don't know it themselves. They think, hey, you got a good idea, yeah. Yeah, let's do, yeah, people want to see, let's think of how we're going to market this and advertise it. Who's our PR campaign going through? This is how they'll run the room. Instead of explaining to the gentleman writing the check, to the folks writing the check, pay-per-view is a long-term play. It is not something on day one, regardless of your time, regardless of your date, or regardless of your attraction that has historically worked. There is a curve and there is an education process and there are human natural behaviors that must be worked out and established over time before your product can turn the corner and be a success on pay-per-view. But boy, the sky is beautiful. The air is rare if you can get there. It may be worth your work. But the other side of it is that it may not. And I'm, I'm only bringing to you, first off, they did not do 75,000. That is, that, that, that is, but if they had, you don't get to call it a bomb. It was projected and expected to be a financial loss. And 75,000 for two o'clock in the afternoon is one of the strongest, one of the absolute strongest buys. As a matter of fact, I'll give you another statistic. There has never been, and this doesn't matter if you're, you're, you're going with Time Warner, if you're going with Cox, if you're going with DirecTV, your usual suspects, there has never been a pay-per-view ever. This was the first. There has never been a pay-per-view that's 2 o'clock Eastern for a price tag of $80, just so you know. So before you call it a bomb, there's actually records that it set. 
There's first times things that it says. 75,000 world paper is a good number. 75,000 for two in the afternoon, that's just isn't going to work. At $80, it broke records. You called it a bomb. Who are you to call it a bomb? You didn't write the check. It was projected to lose money. I agree with that. But it's just one of these situations where I don't know why I have to do everything on my own. I really don't know why. I don't know why I have to bring you the numbers before anybody else. I don't know why I have to tell you pass or fail before anybody else. I don't know why I, who am not the author of the article that even called it a bomb, I didn't write the pay-per-view piece. I don't know why I would be the one that has to inform the audience that it actually set records. That it had a price point higher than any other price point in that time frame ever. You would think that would be included in the delinquent article, but then again, the article came out three days after I already told you guys. I'm not going to get into writing articles. But if I did, like everything else, once I touched the writing of articles, it would never be done the same.